Hello everyone. Happy Wednesday. It's time for a special Wednesday episode of Tuesday Live at 5. This is Lena Gerza. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am so excited to share the beautiful treasured medallion bundle from the Stampin' Up! January to June mini catalog. Now before I get into the bundle, I want to do just a couple of quick reminders. First of all... Da, 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 da. The new annual catalog is coming. It goes live May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. It's an easy date to remember this year. It's a month earlier than normal. And I am getting my order of catalogs coming on Thursday. So that's tomorrow. So next week, uh, we are on our rescheduled April break um, here in Ontario. And I am going to be busy, busy, busy mailing out copies of catalogs to anyone who has requested one. So if you have not yet filled in my catalog request form, it is pinned to the top of my page here. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and do that sooner than later. As I said, I'm going to be mailing catalogs out starting next Monday. And you're going to want to make sure that you get one of these beautiful books in your mailbox. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, it is, it's complimentary. There's no charge for catalogs. Um, it is something that I do for all of my customers and anyone who doesn't currently have a demonstrator who lives in Canada, who would like a copy. Okay. The only way that I can make sure that you get one though, is if you complete my form. So I have your accurate mailing address. Okay. So make sure you do that. All right, let's talk about today's featured product. So we are featuring the Treasured Medallion Bundle. So it's this beautiful stamp set and the coordinating Pick a Label Punch. Okay, so we are going to spend some time playing with that. Um, these products are found on page 37 of the Stampin' Up! January to June mini catalog. Okay, it's easy to miss because again, it's not part of a suite. So often we gravitate to the suites because they're all sorts of pretty pictures with beautiful DSP and ribbons and all sorts of embellishments and it's easy to miss the fantastic bundles that are also in the catalog. So today I am focusing on one of those bundles and we are all about um, heat embossing today and doing some different emboss resist techniques. So I hope you're down with that. Uh, we are going to get started. I'm just going to pull up my video here on my iPad to see who has joined us. Let's see who's here. Okay, I'm seeing my video. I'm not seeing anybody. If you are watching, tell me that you're watching. Maybe everybody's forgotten that I was going to be live today. That's highly possible because normally I'm live on Tuesdays. All right, we are going to get to it. I'm going to flip the camera. So um, just look away for a moment. I'll flip the camera and let you know when we're all good to go. And uh, we'll do some stamping. Okay, here we go. move my cord out of the way here. Let's make sure that's not in the view. There we go. We'll adjust some lights. All right. That looks pretty good. All right, everyone. So as I mentioned, we are going to be playing with this beautiful stamp set. Now, the detail in this medallion image is absolutely amazing. Um, it is a red rubber stamp, which allows Stampin' Up! to get that gorgeous detail. And it looks amazing heat embossed. I'm going to show you just how amazing in a few minutes. Now, the great thing about this set, as many of our sets, we have images and sentiments. So it's kind of a one-stop shop for those who are maybe just starting their stamping collection. And then, of course, we have a coordinating punch. Now, the cool thing about this punch is you can cut your cardstock to different widths and punch different decorative ends to create labels and tags of any size. Okay, so you're going to see that in action later on in, well, in a few minutes. All right, so let's, let me put this here. We're gonna set that aside and we're gonna get to it. So first project we're going to make is this one. This is one that I posted earlier today. Um, it uses the emboss resist technique, which is a really simple embossing technique. It's awesome for newer stampers who maybe, um, you know, are just learning different techniques. But this one just has such a wow and this image is just gorgeous. Heat embossed. So let's get to it. We are going to start with a piece of purple posy cardstock. It is five and a quarter by four inches, okay? And we are going to heat emboss in white this beautiful medallion image, okay? So when you're heat embossing, there are a couple of tools that you'll need. Now, one of which we don't sell anymore, but I highly re recommend getting one. So the embossing buddy is a tool we used to carry. 
Stampin' Up! no longer carries it. I really do not know why, because it is an essential if you ask me. Um, if you have tried heat embossing before and gotten results that you are less than thrilled with and you haven't been using an embossing buddy, that's probably the reason that you're not happy with your results. So it's just a little pouch with um, a, uh, like a, a powder inside of it. And I'm just going to rub that all over the surface of my cardstock where I'm going to emboss. And what that does is it takes off any oils or fingerprints from my hands or adhesive or static and just make sure when I sprinkle my embossing powder, it's only going to stick to my stamped image. Now, the other thing that you need for heat embossing is a Versamark pad. Okay, these are in our catalog. They are clear, sticky ink. All right, so when you stamp, you're not going to see a whole lot until we add our embossing powder. So I'm going to ink up my stamp. I'm going to stamp it just off to the right a little bit, about in the middle. All right, and you're not going to be able to see, you can, I don't know, maybe see a little ghost of an image there, but you, it will be clear in just a moment when we add our embossing powder. So let's set that aside. And I'm going to bring in a tray to catch my extra powder, and I'm going to sprinkle it with white Stampin' Emboss powder. Okay, so this kind of just looks like white sand initially. So we're going to sprinkle that all over our stamped image. And now, can you see that the detail in that image better? I'm, bet, I'm betting you can. I certainly can. All right, now there's a little spot here that I missed. So we'll just add a little more powder. Okay, one of the biggest challenges with heat embossing is people are afraid to waste powder. But really, as long as you have something to catch um, your excess powder in, it goes right back into the pot and can be reused. Okay, so you don't ever need to worry about not or about wasting powder because you're really not. Okay, so be generous when you are sprinkling your powder. We'll set that aside. And then I'm going to bring in my heat tool. Now, there are lots of heat tools available. I like the Stampin' Up! one for a couple of reasons. Number number one is I had a, a non-Stampin' Up! one and it died on me in the middle of a class very inconveniently. So I have never, ever since I've only used Stampin' Up! ones and this one I've had, well, since they, this design came out. I have several of the old design that are, have been tried and true and they're, they're just fantastic. Now, this one has two settings a high and a low. We're going to use the low setting in a couple minutes to dry ink. We're going to use the high setting to do our heat embossing right now. When we're heating, we want to make sure we're not holding it at the tip. This is going to get very hot. Okay. So we don't want to burn our fingers. We're going to turn this on and we want to make sure when we're heating that we're just kind of holding it in one spot until we see the powder set. We will know it's set because it's going to get shiny. It's going to melt and get shiny. And then we're going to move to a different area. Another common problem that people have when they're heat embossing is they kind of do the blow dryer thing, right? Like you're blow drying your hair. <laughs> Don't do that. Because what happens is you get uneven heating. You'll get the edges that are not heated enough and you'll get the middle that is scorched. Okay. So you'll want to make sure that you are eating, heating evenly when we're, um, when we're heating the image. Okay. So here we go. It's going to be a little bit noisy. So I'm going to stop talking and we'll get to it. Okay, can you see how much crisper and clearer that image becomes once the powder is set? So, so pretty. All right. Oh, I see some friends have joined. Hello, Helen. How are you? I hope you're doing well. All right. So we are going to now apply some ink. And what's going to happen is the ink is going to resist the embossing. That's why this technique is called embossed resist. So I'm going to start with some gorgeous grape and using my blending brush. If you don't have blending brushes, sponge daubers work just as well. I'm going to tap off a little bit of the excess and I'm going to start in the middle of my image and I'm just brushing right over top of that embossed image. 
and you'll see how just by darkening it down it just makes the white embossed pattern pop that much more so I'm always starting in the center and working my way out that's because we want the center to be the darkest so if I always start there um, it's going to naturally be darker than the rest of the image and I'm just kind of working out toward the edges of the image I don't want to go too far past the edges because again I want it to just sort of be a really subtle ombre effect so we're just gonna keep adding ink here until we get something we're happy with hi Holly how are you hello Sarah hope you all are well hope it's as beautiful a day where you are as it is here it's just a stunningly gorgeous day today definitely feels like spring has sprung all right maybe just a little bit more darken that down a bit more okay so that is my gorgeous grape then we're going to come in with just a hint of magenta madness and I just love the way the magenta blends with the gorgeous grape you're gonna see what I mean in just a sec so I'm just going to do the center I'm working in very small little circles here just to darken the center down with the magenta isn't that pretty oh I love that look and then I'm gonna come back again just really quickly with a little bit more of the grape to blend that so we're gonna pull that in again and just darken that down a little bit more isn't that pretty oh so gorgeous all right now really important step that many people forget when they're doing emboss resist is to take a tissue or a paper towel and wipe off the excess ink okay by doing that that is going to make you're gonna see the difference that it makes in just a second to see the difference and the way that that the white embossing suddenly pops that much more okay it just makes a it takes off the excess ink and just really allows that white embossed image to pop okay all right last step we're going to do to our background is add a little bit of spatter of white frost white shimmer paint now this is retiring i'm going to be very sad <laughs> when this is no longer um, a current product because if you've watched my videos before you know that i use this stuff a lot i just love the subtle shimmer um, that this provides and just a little bit of added texture that it gives my backgrounds it's just so so pretty and it probably does not show up especially well on the video on the camera but you gotta take my word for it it's really pretty all right so let's set this aside for a minute and we are going to work on our sentiment so here I have just a basic white um, piece of cardstock it is cut to three quarters of an inch wide we're going to use our um, punch and I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to end up with this sort of pointed um, end. Now you, you have three choices for width. You can do half inch, three quarter or one inch when you're making your tags. It's important to make sure when you're inserting this in, you, it's in as far as it will go. Okay. And if you want to double check, you can flip it over. You want to see the end, edge of the cardstock right flush against the back of the punch. You want to make sure that your cardstock is nestled in the little grooves there. And then punch and you get a really pretty finished end okay so simple all right we are going to stamp our sentiment I'm going to use gorgeous grape on this one on my sample I actually um, used a markering technique where I did two different colors and it was a little faint for my liking so I'm actually going to change my sample a little bit and we're gonna stamp you are a treasure in the gorgeous grape ink just to make it a little bit bolder okay then we're going to do a little bit of a ribbon treatment ribbon this is trim really I guess it's ribbon um, remember this stuff this was in the holiday catalog and it um, is still around you can still get it it's not in any current catalog but it is still available so I've cut I don't know probably way more than I need um, and I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna cut the width I'm gonna cut it in half lengthwise so this ribbon is quite wide and I don't want it to be quite as wide as it is for what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut it in half lengthwise. Then I'm going to take a little bit of seal and I'm going to apply some just across sort of where I'm, I'm going to be placing my label. My label is going to go right about here. Okay, so I've added just a little bit of seal 
Oh, Heather, it totally reminds me of Middle Eastern art. Yes, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous multicultural set. I actually was thinking this is perfect with Ramadan starting in the next couple of weeks. All right, so we are going to, I'm just going to take um, one of my widths of ribbon. And I'm going to start um, adhering it to that seal that I put down. And I'm kind of twisting it and sort of mooshing it around, for lack of a better word. Smooshing and whooshing. Okay, so I kind of end up with something that looks like that. It's not very pretty, but keep in mind we are going to put our tag over top. And actually I need to go a little bit wider so that I see more of that. Didn't make my smooshes wide enough. So we're just going to redo it. And that's the beauty of this. If you don't like the first time you do it, you just pull it up and try again. <laughs> it's quite forgiving. Okay. So we're just going to kind of press that into place. I'm going to trim off most of my excess and then I'm just going to wrap this little bit around the back. So I get a clean end here. So I'm going to add a little bit of seal right along the edge. And then I'm just going to kind of wrap that. So it's just clean and tidy. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and add our tag. Now you'll notice the tag is longer than I need. I did that on purpose. Uh, whenever I'm punching with these um, decorative end punches, I'd like to give myself a little bit more length. It just makes it easier to maneuver them in and out of the punch. Okay, so that's just a little tip when using those punches. So we are going to go ahead and add a couple of dimensionals. Oh, Heather, you can still get it. It's available until June 30th. That's the beauty of this mini. It goes until the end of June. So if, if this is a set that you think you might use, especially if you have um, Muslim or Middle Eastern friends, it is a great, a great set. Okay, so I've been here that with some dimensionals. I'm then going to flip my uh, panel over and I'm just going to use the edge of my panel as a guide to trim that off so it's nice and tidy. Okay, and then we're going to layer that on a piece of Highland Heather cardstock. So this is four and one eighth by five and three eighths inches. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and layer that. We're going to have a nice narrow border all the way around. So we'll just add a little bit of adhesive here and pop this on with a nice narrow border, just like that. Okay. All right. Hello, Krista. Welcome. Glad you could join us. I was starting to think maybe everybody forgot that I was going to be live today. <laughs> All right. So here we are with our card base. This is a piece of smoky slate cardstock. It's four and a quarter by 11 inches scored in the middle at five and a half. So we'll fold that in half along our score line. And then we're just going to add a little bit of adhesive again and pop that onto our card base. Just like that. All right. And then we're going to take the other half. Remember that length of ribbon that we cut? We're going to take the other half. We're going to tie a bow. So I've had people tell me they have a hard time tying bows with this ribbon. And the wide ribbon, it is tricky. It is possible, but it is tricky to tie bows. Um, but if you want a slightly smaller scale bow and to have um, it a little bit easier to tie, by cutting it in half widthwise, um, it makes it much more manageable to tie. So it's just a little trick that I find really helpful. So there is my little bow. We're going to add that just sort of to where it it, it um, butts up against the edge of the card as soon as I find my glue dots. There they are. So we'll just take and press the knot of our bow into a glue dot. And we're just going to pop that on right about there. Okay. And then the last touch is to add a little bit of bling because, well... I don't know. It's just a pretty image and it needs bling. <laughs> bling is never a bad decision, right? Right. All right. So I've just got a couple of rhinestones here. These are just odds and ends kicking around from various different packs and different projects. So we'll just add a couple willy nilly on the front of our card. And I'm not sure how well that shimmer shows on the camera, but let me tell you that shimmer paint is just, just, just what it needs to give it that perfect little bit of something. And that is our finished card. I'm just gonna clean up my mess here so that we can get onto card number two. All right, now on the inside of my sample, I'll show you real quick. Oh, never mind. I didn't do anything on the inside of this one. All right, moving on. That was real quick. See, I told you. Okay, next project, more embossed resist, different technique. All right, so this one, um, yes, Heather, this ribbon did carry over. Yep. 
Um, so this one is embossed resist but using watercolor. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this. Now I've already done my embossing ahead of time. I figured you, once you've seen heat embossing once, you don't need to see it again. <laughs> so I'm sorry if you wanted to see heat embossing again. Um, you're not. You're not going to see it again. <laughs> So we are going to do a little bit of watercolor and when I'm watercoloring, I like to use reinkers. Now, if you don't have reinkers for all of your ink pads, um, you can certainly um, use the ink from the pad um, by squishing the pad or taking your block and just pressing it on the pad and picking up ink that way. Okay. Um, I personally like to use my reinkers. Um, you're going to want to use an acrylic, uh, just a plain acrylic block as a, um, uh, palette and all I like to do is just add a couple of drops of reinker in each of the colors I'm going to use so here I have pool party so we'll start with that and I'm using the same aqua painter that I used to apply my frost white shimmer paint and that is because this is totally a happy accident on my sample again it probably doesn't show but I used this brush when I was creating my sample and I got this really subtle bit of shimmer because there was just a little bit of the shimmer paint still left in my brush from um, when I had used it previously so I'm just squeezing my water painter now our or aqua painter now our, our um, paint brushes are called water painters okay they're a little they look a little different do exactly the same thing so I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, ink and water and I'm just going to start doing a wash and you're gonna see it's like magic the embossed images appear and the really cool thing is that this all has just this subtlest little bit of shimmer that is so so pretty Add a little bit more water here want this to be too too dark and if you find that um, it's going on too dark you can just squeeze your water painter or aqua painter a little bit to get a little bit more water um, as you're blending now I should mention I am working on our um, fluid watercolor paper it is a fantastic watercolor paper I was kind of a skeptic for a long time um, I had been using just whatever watercolor paper I got on sale wherever I happened to be and I really didn't believe that our, our fusion paper or fluid paper could be that much better. And I am happy to say <laughs> that it is that much better. It is awesome. Okay, so I've got my base layer down in the pool party. Now I'm going to take a little bit of Pretty Peacock. Now this is one of our retiring in colors. So if you have not yet got your hands on the products that coordinate with this, um, I'm not sure. I haven't checked the... Um, inventory status report lately you may be too late um, I hope you're not because it is a gorgeous color and again just like I did last time I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of water okay and this time I'm just going to kind of go in the middle of my medallion and you can see as I'm doing this how the embossing resists the water isn't that cool I just love this look so again, this is going to be quite a bit darker than my sample, but that's okay. Get a little bit. And the cool thing is, if you get it too dark, you can take a little bit off, right? You just get your water going, and you can pick a little bit up. So you see how I've got lots of, lots of ink on there? Well, I'm just going to pick a little up, and then I'm just going to take my tissue, and I'm going to blot some of it up. Okay, and you see how that just really gets rid of a lot of the ink. Okay, so now I've got my second layer. I'm going to get rid of this and then we're going to add the wow color which is the uh, magenta madness so again just doing I need very little of this ink it's very very saturated color and I'm going to clean my brush just a little because I don't want too much of that peacock in there and again I'm going to squeeze a little bit of water onto my palette here and mix that and then this time I'm just going to do the middle, the center of this medallion. Okay, isn't that amazing? I love the way that looks. I'm also going to do sort of the little centers of these little sort of semicircles all the way around. And I'm literally just touching my brush. I'm not, I'm applying very little ink here. And then same thing on this guy. Just add a little bit in the center. 
And again, I'm going to just touch to the center of each of these little circles or semicircles and add that little hint of the, the magenta. Okay, then once again, to take off the excess, I'm just gonna take a tissue or a paper towel. Normally I would use paper towel, but I don't have any paper towel down here. And I'm just going to blot up some of that excess. And isn't that gorgeous? I just love the look of that. <laughs> um, that color combo is just fantastic. All right, so that needs to dry for a couple minutes. So we are gonna just set this aside for, I don't know, a minute or two while we work on our sentiment and our other layers. So let's just set that aside. And we are going to bring in our sentiment. So this one, this strip, I think it's the same width. I think it's three quarters. Yes, it is. So three quarters of an inch. I somehow ended up using Euro Treasure on all, the, all three of the projects today. I don't know. I didn't plan that. That was kind of bad planning on my part. There are other, are other sentiments in this set. Um, I just love the Euro Treasure um, sentiment because you can use it for so many things, right? You could do a Mother's Day card. You could do a birthday card. You could just do a thinking of you card. You could do a thank you card. So many possibilities with that sentiment. Now I got a little smudgy on there. So we're going to use the back side of this. And we are going to stamp in basic gray. So I'm going to grab my basic gray. And actually, before I do that, we are going to punch our end. So we're going to use the other, um, the other side of this punch. We're going to use this one this time. So once again, I'm going to slide this into... Now, I'm going to show you. So do you see how this doesn't quite fit in the little groove there? It's just a teeny bit too wide. That is a problem. You want your um, width to be exact if you want to get a nice finished end. So I'm going to bring in my trimmer here and we're just going to chop off the teensiest bit. Make sure that that's exactly three quarters of an inch so it fits in the little, the little channel there, okay? If you have these punches and you're having a hard time with them, um, it could be because you're not quite getting your width right, all right? Okay, so we're going to slide it in. Oh, look how that fits perfectly this time. So again, in as far as it'll go and punch and we get that pretty decorative end, okay? All right, so now we're gonna stamp our Euro Treasure. I'm gonna bring in my ink pad. And we're gonna stamp this, I don't know, right about there. Looks good to me. <laughs> and then I'm going to trim it a little bit and we're going to actually punch the other end. So I'm gonna punch, trim it right about there. Remember how I said I like to start with a longer piece when I'm using these punches? It just makes it easier to maneuver them in and out of the punch, okay? You're gonna see as I put this in, it's a little bit harder to maneuver because it's shorter. All right, so we're gonna punch the other end. There we go. Isn't that a pretty little tag? Love it. All right, so now let me set this aside. I need it again. And we are going to add our ribbon. Now this ribbon, we're gonna add a glue dot to one end. Now this is still a little bit wet. I probably, you know what, I'm gonna take a second and we're gonna use our ink drying setting on our heat tool to dry this. So remember how I said there were two settings, okay? The, the low setting is to dry. So I'm gonna use the low setting to just take some of the moisture out of our background here. The nice thing about Okay, it looks like I was frozen, but now I have reconnected. I'm hoping you guys are still back with me. Okay. It looks like it was, oh, I'm still frozen. I'm not sure what's going on here. I know. Okay, you guys, I apologize for the connectivity issues. I know I am getting really lousy picture quality and I keep freezing. Yeah, I see that, Heather. Um, I'm gonna keep going. Um, I will do some editing of the, of the replay, hopefully, and then post the edited replay. Um, sometimes Facebook is my friend and sometimes not so much. <laughs> All right, so I'm adding just a little bit of ribbon. You haven't missed anything because I did catch the fact that I was frozen. So hopefully things continue. Thanks, Krista, for hanging with me. So I just added a little bit of ribbon along that left edge. And then we are going to layer this on some champagne foil. So this is another one of our foil papers that is retiring and I have a ton of. So I am using lots of foil layers these days because I want to use up this gorgeous paper. So these, um, the fluid watercolor 
comes in pieces that are five by seven, seven, five by seven and a half. So if you cut it in half, you end up with a piece that's five by three and a half, which is awesome because it's a great size for a card front. Okay. So this is five by three and a half. Yes. So this one is actually, let me just check, double check three and three quarters this way by five and a quarter. All right. And that's going to give me that nice champagne foil border all the way around. Okay. Oh, Gail, you have the same issue. Maybe it's a Rogers issue. Who knows? Maybe with the stay at home order, they just announced everybody's online. <laughs> Who knows? All right. So we're going to apply a little adhesive to the back of our beautiful watercolored piece. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and add that to our card front before we do anything else. So our card front is pool party or sorry, our card base is pool party cardstock. It's five and a half by eight and a half scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we will fold them in half along our score line. Yes, Heather, I 100% agree. I am sad that we're losing some of these foils as well, but we are getting some pretty cool specialty papers. So I'm sure my sadness will be short lived once I get my hands on all the new goodies. So we're going to just go ahead and add a little adhesive to this and we're going to pop this onto the front of our card. Now your borders are not going to be equal. You're going to have a larger border top and bottom than you will side to side. Okay, so you just need to be aware of that. Okay, and then our little sentiment is going to go on here just with a couple of dimensionals. So we'll just kind of do one, two, and three. And get rid of our backings. And we'll pop that on just about there. No, maybe over a little bit further. There we go. Okay. Oh, I'm freezing again. Come on. Connectivity issues today are not my friend. Okay, so we've added our sentiment label and then we are going to go ahead and tie a bow. Now this ribbon ties like a dream. All right, so I'm pinching my ribbon between my thumb and index finger, making two loops, keeping it nice and flat. Yes, Heather, this ribbon is staying, which makes me very happy. I'm crossing my left loop over the right, bringing it around and through and pulling. And then, then it's a matter of just teasing a pretty bow out of your ribbon. So I find when I'm using very sheer ribbon, I like to pull a really nice tight knot that helps it hold in place. And then I can play around with my loops. So we'll trim our ends and we're going to add this just down in the corner here. So we'll add a glue dot to the knot and it's going to go on just like that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, love that ribbon. And then the last touch is another embellishment that I haven't used enough, but thankfully that is carrying over. And that is the Artistry Blooms sequins. Now the Artistry Blooms um, suite is going away, but these pretty sequins are not. And these sequins are perfect for this project. I didn't actually plan it that way, but sometimes we have these happy accidents, right? Where you find it, you, you design a project and then you find the perfect embellishment. And the colors in these sequins are simply perfection. <laughs> they have all the colors that are in this card. So let's do it kind of like that. All right, there we go. Um, on the inside of this one, I did a little bit of ombre stamping. So I used that same medallion image, but this time I inked it first with pool party and then used a sponge dauber to apply a little bit of the magenta madness. All right, super pretty, super easy. That's number two. So let me clean up a little bit of mess here because it is getting a little out of hand. <laughs> and then we're going to move on to number three. Now, number three is one that I posted yesterday. So this one uses heat embossing as well. This is not an embossed resist technique, but it uses the spotlight technique. So spotlighting is where we emphasize certain parts of the image by adding color, whereas the rest of the image is um, in a neutral. So I wanted to highlight the center of the medallions. So I added three different shades of purple cardstock, heat embossed with the, a portion of the image, um, die cut and raised with dimensionals. So let me show you how I did that. It's pretty straightforward. I've already done most of the heavy lifting on this one. So I'm starting with a piece of smoky slate cardstock. It's four by five and a quarter inches. I'm going to bring in my medallion stamp 
and I'm going to ink it up using Smoky Slate cardstock. So I'm doing tone on tone here. Now, as I'm stamping, I just want to make sure that that center circle on my image, the entire circle is on the cardstock each time. Okay. The rest of the image can trail off the edge, uh, but we just want to make sure we get all of that circle image. Um, each time we stamp because that will allow us to do our spotlighting. Oh, and having said that, I think this one's going to go off the edge. Oh, no, it just made it. <laughs> just, that was a close one. And we'll stamp one more time in this corner. And again, I'm just going to make sure I'm getting all of my image. Okay, isn't that pretty just like that? It's such a gorgeous stamp. Oh, I had some serious fun coloring this image on the weekend. I will post those later in the week. Um, but it is a fun, if you like color, adult coloring books and co you find coloring relaxing, this uh, medallion image is awesome to color. All right, so in my little bag of goodies here, I have three stamped and heat embossed in white uh, medallions. So this is on Purple Posy, Highland Heather, and Gorgeous Grape. Okay, um, heat emboss them in white, as I said, and then I die cut them using my layering circle dies. All right, then I also die cut three scallop circles which i am going to layer behind each one and it just adds the cutest little detail behind um, the colored image so let me grab my liquid glue <laughs> well it could be a lebanese day i was cer i certainly was thinking ramadan as i was designing these many many of my students will be observing ramadan in over the next month um so i kind of had that on my mind as i was working on these this weekend so Certainly it was not, uh, I was not Lebanese focused, but I certainly was, was considering the fact that Ramadan is almost upon us. So here we go. We're going to layer each one of our circles, our colored circles onto a scalloped white one. And I just love that subtle little bit of scallop peeking out behind each one. So these are going to get layered onto our gray stamp medallions. Okay, and again, we're going to add just a couple of dimensionals to the back of each one. Oh, I might have to do three. I don't know. I'm just, a, I, yeah, I like my dimensionals. What can I say? <laughs> if you've watched my videos for any length of time, you know I'm a dimensionals addict. And then we'll do number two. So we'll go one, two, and three. We'll get rid of these. And we'll pop this one on here. And then one more. And we'll add that one right there. Okay, isn't that pretty? I just love that. All right, now I've already stamped and heat embossed in white uh, my sentiments. So this is um, on basic gray cardstock. Same process as I showed you earlier. I'm gonna grab my punch, and again, I'm using this side. So this one is cut to three quarters of an inch wide. So we're going to slide that in and punch so we get our decorative end, okay? Now this piece is cut to one inch wide. So it's gonna go in and we're gonna create a layer to put behind the gray. So again, in as far as it'll go and punch. Oh, hello, Kathy. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're enjoying my videos. So isn't it pretty the way that we can layer these labels and get these really pretty decorative ends on them? I just love that look. So we are gonna go ahead and just glue our gray layer onto, yes, Kat, Krista, you know me well, dimensionals and bling, that's me. <laughs> and bows, I like my bows too. <laughs> and layers, well, what can I say? <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and layer that onto the front of our card. I'm not going to worry about trimming this off just yet. I'll wait till I get this onto my card. We're going to add some dimensionals to pop this up. So we'll just kind of do one, two, three on the back of my labels here. And we're going to layer this just so it, so it's sort of peeking on uh, right about there. Looks good and hopefully straight. All right, and then it's just a matter of flipping my panel over and using the edge of my panel as a guide and trimming off the excess length. Again, I just find it easier to work with these punches and slide the little labels in and out if I have a longer piece. That's, that's the only reason that I, I cut my pieces longer than I need. 
All right, now here I have a piece of purple posy cardstock. It is four and a quarter by 11, scored in the middle at five and a half. And this piece actually had a little bit of a flaw on it. It was, it's, it doesn't go through, so it just looks like the die was not quite applied evenly, but that's okay, we can hide it. So there's no sense in throwing out a piece of cardstock that is flawed when we can just hide the flaw, right? <laughs> I am very good at hiding flaws and mistakes, as you probably know if you have watched my videos for any length of time. So we're gonna go ahead and layer our pretty spotlighted or spotlit card front to our purple posy layer. So we'll just pop that on just like that. And then of course, a little bit of bling. Now these are some embellishments that are leaving us very soon. These are the frosted epoxy droplets. Um, they're quite pretty and I love the way that they just kind of blend with the smoky slate background. Now, I think I'm gonna use the small guys on this one. Just want them to be subtle. So there are two sizes of these. There's one that's a little bit larger and one that's a little bit smaller. I decided to stick with the small ones on this. But there you go. Okay, super easy, no ribbon on this. Look at that. Now on my sample, I did do a little bit of spattering with my uh, frost white shimmer paint. That is certainly an option. I didn't do it as I was making it here because I figured you've already seen me do it. Um, and again, on the inside, I just added a whisk, uh, basic white. I almost said whisper white. Naughty, naughty, basic white uh, layer where I stamped just the medallion. Look at how pretty it is, just in, in gray and white. It's such a gorgeous image. So there we go, one two, let's put this one down here, and three. There are your three projects for today. I hope you like those. Um, I will post um, these again in detail on my Instagram account. So if you're not following me on Instagram, you'll want to hop over and do that. Um, I post lots of samples that I don't necessarily show in my videos over on Instagram. So you may want to check that out. Um, I've got some awesome ones that I did some coloring with some stamp and blends over the weekend. So they'll be posting later in the week. All right. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I do apologize for the connectivity issues. I hope you were able to follow along and it wasn't too, too blurry for you. Um, but thanks for tuning in on a Wednesday instead of a Tuesday. Back next week, we're right back to our regular Tuesday time slot. I just took um, last night off to celebrate my son's 15th birthday. So 14th birthday. Oh, let's not rush. 14th birthday. Um, so that's why I'm live today instead of yesterday. But next week, we'll be back to Tuesday. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.